my goodness. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. You know, at just 14 years old, our next guest left his home in England to become an apprentice to the great Steve Irwin, learning to handle snakes and other reptiles. Now, he treks into the wild to teach others about anacondas, crocodiles, and other amazing animals on his Nat Geo Wild show out there with Jack Randall. Folks, make a ridiculous amount of noise. The man himself, Jack Randall, is in the building. Are you excited? I'm pumped. I said it to him in the green room. I'll say it again. He is the, the best kind of crazy. I'm so excited he's here. He's got a couple of friends with him. We're going to have a blast. Uh, we'll bring him out in just a second. But first, I believe we have a look at the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. This is the place to see lots of stuff, lots of reptiles here. Of course, the big water pythons. You know, that's uh, what we're looking for. We just head down this way and go left around the swamp. Oh, snake. That looks like a water python. No, it's not. That's not a python at all. That looks like a slaty grey. Wow, I've never seen a slaty grey that big before. They're normally very aggressive. Actually, this one's OK. That's as big as they get. I haven't seen one bigger than that. It's completely non-venomous. It's got lots of teeth in there. Normally, they are the bitiest thing out here. It's the snake that I would almost guarantee would probably try and bite me. But you're not getting bitten. No. no. What's going on? Oh, do you, you want to go? Maybe, maybe it may... Yeah. No, I don't want to go. <laughs> you thank have you. a go? <laughs> no, thank you. It's probably got to the point where it says, nothing can eat me, so why should I bite anything unless I really have to? You can see why they call it slaty grey. Look at that grey coloration. Just wrapping around me. Knows that I don't mean any harm. Funnily enough, where we were thinking we might find a python, this snake is going to the holes where the water python laying their eggs. They actually eat the water python eggs. But it also has this kind of musk, and I can actually begin to smell that. So that's another defense mechanism to try and get you to go away. Oh, that stinks. I'm glad you're in a separate tent. <laughs> yes. That's a beauty. I love slaty greys. I think it's time to put this guy away. But I think let this snake go back hunting again, but completely wrapped around my hand, so it's going to be quite hard to let... Ah! He's really come for me now! Oh. That really... Oh, it went straight for my... Ow! Oh. <laughs> He's just gone for my thumb. That really hurt. It went so deep into me. Oh, anyway, uh, I'm going to let this snake go. Off you go. I thought it was completely relaxed, and then put it down, and then just wanted to have a last chew on me. I'm right there, you can see how much it's bleeding. That really does actually hurt quite a bit. I'm lucky that this is a non-venomous snake, but perhaps gonna to have to clean that up because this tooth has gone really deep in there. Liam, have you got like something I can clean this up with? This is Liam, our medic. Yeah. You can see how deep that is there. So just the one here? Yeah. Well, let's catch some snakes. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Jack Randall right here. Unbelievable. <laughs> Oh my gosh! W welcome. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for uh, inviting me here. Of course. Uh, how are you, man? How is life right now? You excited? The show's out there. People are seeing it, digging it. How are you it, doing? It's great. I mean, uh, it's always been a dream to to show some of these amazing animals to the world, and that's been the mission. So it's 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 great. And and you know, this stuff is unscripted. You never yeah. know what an animal is going to do out in the wild. Every now and again, there's a little bite. It gives a good entertainment. That clip um, kills me. You were so close. You were almost off the hook. You hung out with that thing for forever. And you're like, all right, I'm going to put him back now. Yeah. And just, you were inches away from the ground and boom, snapped around and got you. I mean, what were you thinking in that very moment as that snake was latching um, onto you? Well, it's part of a hazard of doing you know, of a job. I know that yeah, you know, that species, slaty grey, is um, notoriously bitey. Yeah, it's a bite. And bite. Um, the fact that it hadn't bitten me by that point, I was a bit confused. And <laughs> when it was wrapped around my hand, I, I knew it was, was going to be difficult to get that snake off without it biting me. And then it happened. It's not that bad. It's non venomous snake. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've I've, I've got pinch. like crazy like, loads of stories of getting bitten by snakes and uh, we're gonna get to that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i, I want to talk about this show too man but like i said earlier i, I really just kind of i love your story and i was uh reading up 
And you were like 13, and we see a little bit in the intro to the show as well, that when you were young, like yeah. really young, I mean like 13 or 14, you, uh, uh, you were an apprentice to, to Steve Irwin. And I've gotten a chance, I've been very fortunate to talk to the Irwin family a couple of times, and like that spirit, that enthusiasm, yeah. uh, it's very much uh, inside you as well. And I'm wondering, how did that all come about? How did you, at such an early age, get down to the Australia Zoo and get down to the Irwins and, and meet Steve and work with them? Well, it's... It was really, I was really fortunate. Yeah. Um, but it, I've always loved animals. Yeah. Um, and, and I've always loved snakes, actually, but all animals. Um, and ever since I was, I remember the first time watching a wildlife documentary. Uh, and I vividly remember the space where I was sitting on the sofa um, and, and watching this, this program, a special or National Geographic of anacondas, this guy walking barefoot, catching anacondas for research. And I was like, wow, that's yeah. just amazing. Um, that was my first memory of like watching a wildlife documentary. And then I continued watching. I was really kind of obsessed. I was lived in the UK. You had to ballpark it. How old were you, do you think? If you had uh, lived... the, the, the Venezuela anaconda story, uh, when I was watching that, about six or seven years old. Wow. Um, and then, the, you know, the year after, or a couple of years after that, watching um, other documentaries, guys putting spiders on their head. And so this stuff um, inspired me to learn more about the animals that I was watching. So it was that kind of like, excitement factor that gave that passion to me initially. And so, uh, you know, buying books, but I'm still yeah, I'm yeah, in, in yeah. the UK. Steve Irwin um, and then ends up on the TV screens and um, Steve Irwin becomes my hero. Changes um, the game, yeah. Changes the game. Um, and I was so obsessed with snakes and I was in Mexico and um, a friend of mine at the time, I was lo off looking for snakes and stuff. It was quite obvious at this point, I'm 13 years old that um, it's a bit crazy that this guy is only 13 <laughs> he's, and he's spending his time looking in the holes, looking for rattlesnakes. And my friend um, really bizarrely uh, said that his girlfriend had a photo shoot with, um, with Steve um, <laughs> and we're going to try and you know, see if you can, see if you can meet touch him. bait. Yeah, just like, yeah. Cool. And I ended up uh, uh, in Australia uh, meeting Steve. And Wild. Uh, my first question he asked me, he said, um, you, oh, hey, you like snakes? <laughs> and uh, and I said, yeah, I, I love love snakes. And he said, have you got you know a pet snake? I said, yeah, I've got a pet snake. He said, have you been bitten? And I said, yeah. He's like, good, okay, fine. <laughs> and then he <laughs> that was the, the bus, test. Yeah, yeah. The, the test. If you can handle and, that. Um, yeah, that was the test. And and he then said, why don't you come back in your school holidays? You know, you seem really passionate about yeah. um, reptiles. Come here and work uh, in the reptile department. And so he gave me that opportunity at a really young age to learn how to handle reptiles and work with them. And, um, yeah, the rest is kind of history. I've ended up going, you know, studying biology, going more and down the academic route, right, really right. getting quite detailed in terms of animal behavior and then getting out into the wild, doing my own expeditions and filming everything and getting bitten at the same time, learning about all these animals. A lot of the things that, that I probably now look back on, like, you know, I was pretty lucky that something bad didn't happen. Right. Um, and, 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 and now, you know, doing TV. Yeah. When did you realize that the animals that you were most interested in and the wildlife that really like fascinated you was the stuff that a lot of people were typically terrified of? Like you were, you're really into snakes, spiders, and all, all uh, tarantulas and all these different things. You're also into cute things as well. Yeah. But like you are genuinely, there is a passion, there is a fascination with stuff that for the majority of the population is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, and I think, so So you mentioned tarantulas and spiders. I mean, um, for me, I'm not entirely sure. It must be to something I've just, for some reason, I've loved snakes, but I, I do like the, you know, I've always liked crocodiles, but it was also chimpanzees. I love them. Um, but it, I, it may be the fact that the, the unknown, I am, I'm fascinated by yeah. that. And so it was snakes that there was a bit of an unknown, especially coming being brought up in the UK, there's only got three species of snakes, it's a bit of a kind of foreign world. That really? stuff, only three? In the only UK? three, yeah. And oh. um, it's quite rare to really see them. Um, I, you know, I would see grass snakes every now and again, but not really adders. Yeah. There's smooth snakes pretty much endangered. Um, um, it, it's because it's too cold. You know, reptiles, they like warm areas. Got it. And so they haven't evolved to um, live in different areas. And it really puts in perspective that first episode, you can't walk 10 feet in that episode without finding another species of snake or like jumping on something. Well, you, that slaty gray um, yeah. time, um, that was a funny day because, you know, this is my first TV show um, and there's a lot of pressure for me to find the animals and make some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, and that was the first day where we had National Geographic 
um, executive there with all of my producers from the, you know, from the production company. We had like accountants, like everybody there that day. They all came out into the middle of these swamps. It was like, uh, I was, and, I, and I had no idea there was going to be any snakes. We started, <laughs> and obviously Gavin said this is a good spot. Yeah. Um, that, that day, um, and this is in that episode, in the morning, looked in the burrow, immediately there's a water pipe, and bam, we got the best activity in the world. And then people, like, there was the accountant there, who was, like, from America. He was, like, you know, kind of Midwest-type guy. He was, like, damn, he's good. <laughs> like, he's, like, and I was, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, but it was, good. like, it was, like, you could, you could, it was just really, really fortunate. And then that night with Slaty Gray, that was just one of ten snakes that night. That's insane. Um, so, yeah, we, we got a lot of snakes in that episode, but we were specifically in an area where we knew we would find snakes. Yeah. So the thing is with animals that I've learned that um, you know if you're if you're you've got a target species, you go to the right area, you you've got a very good chance of finding that animal. If you're not in the right area, you've got zero chance of finding it because yeah. they don't live there. So what I'm beginning to realize is that when you're looking for different species, you've got to understand that animal, what habitat he that species lives in, and um, and target that. And uh, it's because that's his home. Or his or her home, and uh, and it's 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 quite amazing when you start seeing that because people think it's just pot luck. It's like it's not right. Really. Right. No, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. And let me ask you this: Net Geo calls you up. They say, "Hey, we're giving you a show. You're going to go around the world. You're going to find whatever you want to find. You're going to do whatever you want to do." Yeah. How do you narrow down the list uh, and decide? All right, I want to do an episode where I go find these guys. I want to go hang out with the kangaroos. I want to do this. I want to do that. How do you narrow that down and figure that out? Really tricky. I mean, yeah. honestly, like I, 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 it's like, where do you want to go? And there's like a million different lists of, you know, what, yeah. what I haven't done and what I have done. Um, the reason why it was Australia to start with is because it was kind of lower risk. I knew Australia, yeah. um, and I knew that I wouldn't mess it up. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like I knew where we could find the animals. I knew the animals. Um, you know, n next time we'll take a more risky location where um, may we might not find the animals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the first time in Australia, and it makes sense. So we did. Um, you know, it's the land of the reptiles. Lots of reptile episodes, but obviously marsupials. So we've got a really cute episode uh, of of kangaroos, marsupials, and um, it's do you know, a lot of people have said they really enjoyed that episode. So yeah. I don't want to just do scary stuff that people no, are scared for of, sure. but also the cute stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, were what people might consider cute. Were the account? I'm just thinking. Uh, were the accountants and all them there when you had to climb into that cave in the first episode? No, no. Is that part? No, of no, like, no, I better no, put on a good show. No, man. no. So, so, so there's, there's a location. It was filmed in, in the Northern Territory, Australia. Yeah. There's one place you go into. You go to Darwin. That's kind of the capital of the Northern Territory. Yeah. That is a place called uh, Fog Dam, which is like near there. It's notorious for having the highest density of water pythons in the world. It's crazy. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I, I like I love doing this stuff, even when it's not filming. I got there. I was like, I'm going to Fog Dam. Yeah. Found those, and I told the guys, oh, yeah, I've got all these things. Like, just wait until we start filming. <laughs> um, anyway, so we got. Uh, so, what was the question again? <laughs> just, I was just curious. Like, what? It really, it's a, it's a sort of a bird's eye view of a question of like, what drives you in those moments to do these really scary things? Yeah. Like, you admit that you're afraid. You go, that was really scary. They had to do that. So Ooh, you're working through fear. Mm. But when you got to that cave, like mm. I said, when I was watching it, yeah. my palms were sweaty, man. Just watching yeah. you, the walls are this far apart, and then you got to climb around with a snake around your freaking neck. And yeah. it's like this dude's got to be terrified, but you don't show that. No. You're very focused. Uh, and I'm wondering. How do you do that? Like, what's uh, going on in your head? How do you push through those moments? And I was, it's, I it's was giving credit to the accountants. No, <laughs> so the, the account, well, the, the first part about the accountants weren't there. They weren't so there. They were, so no they were there on that first location, which yeah. was near Darwin. To get to that place, mm. to find the Arampelli python, really yeah. rare, the rarest python in the world, we genuinely had to take a helicopter right into the middle of Arnhem Land, and the only way we could get there was with permission of the indigenous people that, that own that land. Yeah. So it's a huge yeah. privilege to be able to go herping, huge. what we call it, like snake, going looking for snakes in the area. Um, and we, we landed into this spot in this canyon, which was like so beautiful, it was crazy. And then that was the moment I realized I was making stuff for National Geographic. This is pretty crazy. Yeah. And the chop has gone off. And uh, I'm there like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, and the so, yeah, we, we hit, found that yeah. cave, funny enough, um, uh, perfect habitat. Um, but the, there's a director who's trying to you know, make stories and stuff, and he's also considering you know, the cameras. You know, this cave is like this. Yeah, it was so super it's new. perfect. I'm like, we need to be filming in here. We need to go in there. 
And he's like, mm, we can't get the cameras down there. Yeah. And I'm like, well, we gotta, we got to do it. And he was just like, oh. And I was like, really persistent. We, we're going to go down that cave. That's where like, the But how are we going to film it? And I spoke to the camera guy. And he was like, well, we've got the GoPro. We've got like the small little kind of SLR camera. So we, so like 20% of the episodes filmed with a GoPro and SLR. And it's not even the big camera. No, but it looks That's incredible. the amazing thing you can yeah. do these days. You can capture stuff um, just with your GoPro. Yeah. Um, Unreal. Well, <laughs> speaking of uh, snakes and, and one of the rarest snakes in the world, I don't believe this is one of the rarest in the world, but this is a gorgeous snake that was in that episode. You brought some friends along with you, I mentioned yes, earlier. Of course. I do want to remind the audience, as we're bringing out uh, all our, our, our friends over here, Scaly and otherwise, uh, no need for applause. We're just going to keep it quiet. We don't want to startle anything. But if you want to express your enthusiasm, I believe gasps are fine. Uh, we've done this in the past. Uh, but either way, uh, yeah, just no loud applause. And that's, that's a safe distance right there, buddy. So what do we, what what we got here? Tell me about our first extra special guest. So this here is, ah, is, is a jungle carpet python. So it's an Australian snake. Non-venomous. It's Was this one of the bitey ones? They do bite. Um, Got it. Notoriously. This did, no, the, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this... this <laughs> you work. It's fine. Yeah, so, are, so are you one of those that are quite scared of snakes? I wouldn't say quite scared. It's the bitey part I'm a bit worried about. But yeah, I think um, um, so the, I'm it's all the right. Thing. So actually, the first snake wow, I got bit right around the, the neck, huh? Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's easier. They, they, they feel like they're on a tree or something like that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but no, they're, they're quite amazing. They can actually sense... Everybody in this in this room because they've got heat-seeking pits here. It was a bit of a joke when we were filming because I was always like every pipe and heat-seeking pits. So everybody started joking. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they start, you know, seeing me as a tree. Um, <laughs> And so, actually, in the wild, uh, yeah, carpet pythons are quite defensive. We found one in that in that first um, yeah. episode, um, which was quite great. It was the first snake that I actually caught in the wild in Australia. Um, a lot of snakes end up in people's houses, hmm. and um, just to seek refuge. Yeah, yeah. Get out. Um, uh, um, is that, is, was that? Uh, there you are. Yeah, um, got it. Yeah. They end up in people's houses, and actually, I was um, I was at Australia Zoo. And I hadn't done one of these snake rescues out of people's house. And Steve went, well, why don't you go in and do this one? And so I jumped in the occasion and went to some guy's house. Um, and there was a carpet python. And I just put my hand and it got bitten immediately by this carpet python. That's how you learn. Um, and I learned, yeah. And I got <laughs> back and I, uh, actually the, the other guy who was like kind of looking after me, you know, going, I was only 15. Um, he uh, he said, don't, don't, don't tell Steve. Like, this, you know, no, you shouldn't do that. And I got back immediately. I said, Steve got bitten. And he was like... <laughs> So yeah, it's it's a really really like I love snakes. It's a and beautiful. The amazing thing is beautiful that snake, they can yeah. be extremely calm. Um, just it's like very it. chill. Actually. Yeah, I'm noticing that. So are you sure you don't want to have a, a closer look? You know, there's just only so much time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he does seem quite yeah. calm. Let me ask you this: How uh, how adept is he at sensing fear? Well, um, they, they they can sense fear because. Generally, especially hey, if you're going to move on. I'll get closer. Uh, all right, so, cool. So, Let me see. Can I just? Is it, the bottom a safe? Actually, you can hold the tail. Actually, if you. I'll like. hold the tail. I'm all yeah. about the tail. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> the tail is my favorite part of the snake, arguably. <laughs> yeah. Because what's this gonna do? <laughs> well, oh, it it's gonna wrap you. around me. It okay, can, it can poo on you, um, especially that'll be the first sign of um, Honestly, uh, a little bit. But I can handle a little bit of poo. Does the poo have fangs? No, no. So it's not good. I mean, even if you did get bitten, this is the thing. <laughs> Even if you did get bitten, the Go worst on. case scenario, you could end up like me with uh, with a little bit of blood. Um, it's not that bad. Fair um, enough. The venomous snakes in Australia, you have to be careful of. There's a lot of a lot of venomous snakes. It's actually the only country in the world more venomous snakes than non-venomous snakes. Um, really? And they're they you know the top ten most venomous snakes in the world live in Australia. My God, um, the power you can yeah. feel in it, even just at the end. Yeah, extremely um, strong. Like snakes are uh, like pretty much pure muscle, and you can imagine a python that doesn't have venom to kill its prey. It needs to constrict its prey. Um, so this is just pure muscle. So this is absolutely doing nothing. It's only pretty much just gripping hold of you to stay um, on you. But actually, if you felt the full force of that constriction, you really would turn purple. It's tightening up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when do you make the decision to like uh, grab? Because sometimes some snakes you'll. I'm sorry. Some <laughs> snakes you'll like grab them right right by the top of the head to sort of like for safety. I imagine like when they're sh like crazy venomous or really angry. Yeah. Or this guy seems chill, so you're just sort of letting him do his thing. Well, it's calm and it's it used to being handled. Um, Jack, I got so, about yeah. half. Like, I got an eighth inch of stage over here, buddy. I <laughs> I, I can take it. <laughs> I appreciate it. And well, you're going we, a long we, way. We've got a lot more other animals for you. To 
Yeah. That's how you'll feel. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's take this one. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, what was that snake's name? That, well, that one's Misty. Um, so the, the, the animals that we've got today are all rescue animals. Son of a... <laughs> all right. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> so we've got a slightly more frisky, bitier character this time. Oh, um, man. I've been doing a, a, you know, a few of these interviews the past couple of days. Yeah. And um, I ended up with a tooth going through my um, shoulder there. You can see... Oh, I see. You got, you got nicks yeah. there. Yeah. 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 So you, 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 this one doesn't have the tape around. So you have to be a little bit careful. Got you know it. What? It's, this is an American alligator. And um, they're quite calm generally they can be almost tame it's almost like a puppy dog he's um, got a smirk that <laughs> yeah. just communicates clearly that he knows he could mess me up um, like there is a smile that it is quite strange being I'm here with charge. an alligator here but i'll see if i can um slightly open up his his, his mouth yeah let's, let's <laughs> there's actually might, we were might. we were hanging out with this and what's this guy's name um this one's actually called steve steve um yeah oh isn't that fantastic uh, well, Steve's a little bit uh, less he's, scary he's when I know his calm. name's Steve. Oh, as you can see, the mouth is starting to open a little bit. Come on, Steve, open it up. Say, ah. Give me a little something, Steve. Play good. to the camera. This is your moment. We're going to get these dots going, and I think... Nope, not playing ball. He's really but anyway, so you can see that there's teeth there. There is a mouth in there. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you. Um, but <laughs> they, you can see how unbelievably... They really are. Every time I look at a uh, crocodilian... They really are kind of almost like dinosaurs. Just yeah. look at those hands as well. You can see how these animals, they're all quite similar even to us. You know, mm. they've got five digits there, um, but they're specialized to the way they live. Yeah. So this, this animal has got eyes top of his head to allow that he can stay submerged at night with those eyes just, um, just popping out so you can see any prey coming along. They don't move much at all because they're ambush predators. They're weight their prey to come down and they um, pounce out. So they're really quite amazing animals um, and quite robust as well. Look at that, quite chunky. Forgive my ignorance, how large will uh, Steve get or is Steve there? Is he kind of maxed out at oh, that point? Oh, wow, no, not no, even close. Not even close. I mean, it, not oh, even Lord. close. Uh, so this, you know, American alligators get to about four, four and a half meters, about half, half a ton. So in, in Australia, so they're really big, Big animals. Yeah. Um, in Australia, Steve. the biggest the biggest reptile in the world is a saltwater crocodile. And the saltwater crocodile can get up to a ton. A ton in wow. weight. Imagine this. But, like, you know, I don't know. This weighs, I don't know, maybe f 10 kilos max. Oh, um, yeah, can you imagine that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Say crocodilian one more time. It's a fun word, isn't it? Crocodilian. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I just needed an opportunity to get that in. I couldn't do it naturally, so there we go. Yeah. So Steve is going to get uh, much, much larger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, have you? Uh, how about yourself? Have you encountered one at its as, uh, largest size? Are you as comfortable? What did you? Speaking of Steve's, what's like the craziest thing you did when you were apprenticing Steve? Um, did you get involved with the Crocs? I Maybe. did yeah. actually, and um, uh, I, alligators was my my kind of learning mm -hmm. uh, learning about crocodilians. I had alligators and um, feeding them at this size. Um, you know, kind of trying to avoid the snap of, of a, you know a small little alligator. But on my fifteenth birthday, Steve um, uh, said, um, "You know, I've got a, you know a present for you." I was like, "Oh, cool! You know, what is it?" You know, um, and he was like, "Well, I'm gonna g give you the opportunity to feed our big saltwater crocodile." Oh, monkey, you shouldn't have a fifteen uh, fifteen <laughs> foot salty. And um, wow, that was like the best present you could possibly get because wow. it's a huge privilege to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah for and, sure. Um, but before he he let me uh, feed the crocodile, I had to promise to him. Um, he looked me in, in my eyes, really, and I'm only 15 years old, 15, and I'm yeah. get, getting told by Steve, who's my hero, um, but he's telling me something really serious, and he's saying, I'm not going to let you come into this pen, feed Monty, until you promise to me that for the rest of your life, you will save and protect crocodiles. And I looked back him in the eye and I said, yeah, I promise. And yeah. he said, yep, we're going to go in. Well, let's go do it. So, wow. um, yeah, moment. so I had, I had worked with crocs, but um, I was still learning a lot about crocodilians yeah. um, in the wild. And, and actually in Australia, there's two different species, the freshies and the salties. Salties are the bigger ones, but the freshies, freshies and aren't. Freshies and salties. Yeah, and, yeah. and the freshies are, are smaller, um, more, more fish-eating um, um, crocodiles, and they get pushed out by, by the big salties. Ah. Um, but they've lived and co-evolved together, 
But um, there's, you know, we, we did a lot of research into what happens when the salties that are increasing their population, how do they push up? He's, do, he's, he's doing the blinking thing, like the sideways blinky thing. He's doing like that. So, so that sideways <laughs> blinky thing is actually, so what? what That's the technical see, crocodilian, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sideways blinky um, thing. So that sideways blinky thing. So when they're underwater, they still need to be able to see. So they've got a third eyelid called a nictitating membrane. Um, so they go doop, like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's quite cool. So nice. Um, yeah, that's the amazing thing. Every time you look at something like this, an animal, you start to just see uh, how so they're amazing. really quiet. Do you want to feel? Uh, where can I feel? Safe. Um, the, the, well, <laughs> no, no, it's like, so we can. You can Where's you can, the tail? Um, that's yeah, not that's my sweet back. Wow, yeah. that is just straight up dinosaur skin. Yeah, it really is. That dinosaur. is wild. All right, as much as I'm enjoying the crocodilian portion of the segment, we're yeah. going to do something a little more my speed. Next, you have another friend that's coming out here. As you yeah. said, uh, uh, much as the goal of the show, to do some of the, the creepy, crawly, the, the interesting, but also, we got a hedgehog. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Look at got... this. So this is a, a pygmy African hedgehog. What is up, buddy? <laughs> oh, look at his little nose. It's going Snuffing crazy. Around. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're so cute, aren't they? Um, so they're, you know, you can see the little spikes there. They yeah. use them to avoid... Um, or, or deter a predator from eating him, and he'll roll oh up into a ball. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Are you just dropping spikes, or are those from, like, little... No, not no. spikes. They don't drop their spikes. Not oh. like a porcupine. Okay, no, I didn't think so. Okay. Um, but they, know, they, I'm an expert. <laughs> 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 I didn't think he dropped his spikes. I'm just... I'm talking. I had no idea what he was going to do. Oh. Every one of these spikes could fall out, and I'd be like, oh, that's, I guess that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so they don't drop their spikes. No. Uh, what uh, purpose will they serve in the wild if they don't fall out? Can I touch them um, gently? So, yes, you, if you if you go straight that way, and then doesn't hurt so much for you. Okay. Yeah, everybody very quiet while I do this, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. What so purpose cool. do they do in the world? Well, yeah. they, they eat insects. Right. So they come out at night. Actually, I'm from the UK, and the hedgehogs are, like, pretty much the wildest animal you can find, not this species. Oh. This is, oh, look, he's hiding underneath my hand. Um, oh, my gosh, uh, so, so they, they, they snuffle around. I've heard that they, um, they move extremely quickly. Oh, so um, we're not going to put them down. Uh, at night, um, oh. and, and they, they're looking for their, for their insects. Um, they've got a great sense of smell. Hey, buddy. They can see that nose already just like... I don't know around. if the camera get in there, but he has the, the cutest little tiny eyes. Yeah, I can see it on the... All right, we're getting it. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. His face. Him or her? What's the name? I don't know. I don't know. So, um... um Do we know yeah. a name? What do we got? Ra Rafiki. This is Rafiki? Male. This is a male. Oh, Rafiki. <laughs> what a powerful name for yeah. such a little guy. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, have you ever uh, had one of these at home before? Or no, you're more reptilian than uh, around the yeah, house. Yeah, in, 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 in the, the, the hedgehogs in the UK, as I say, they're, yeah. they're the wildest animal you come across. So um, the first you know, animal that I kind of got to know when I was younger was actually you know, hedgehogs. Um, and they just, oh, they're really, really quite cute. Oh, and my God, his eyes are open. Yeah. They're like little black spheres. Oh, and they're closed now. <laughs> hey, you're, you're just shy, aren't you, Rafiki? <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. I tell you what, let's turn the lights off and put them down, see how fast he can run. Anybody <laughs> yeah. up for that? I mean, no? I've heard that no, he really no seriously run quickly. I, 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 I would it. like to see it myself. Maybe I'd need like night vision goggles. But apparently, yeah, they move four miles every night. Jeez. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Wow. Um, it's crazy. All right, well, he is fantastic. We've got yeah. a few more that we're going to bring up here. Uh, this next one, oh, look at this guy. Yeah, here we go. You put him down? Yeah. So oh, what an what a unit. Look at you. So what, what do you think this is? Huge. Uh, well, it's huge. <laughs> Absolute whopper. Um, it's a huge one, right? Um, My goodness. So yeah, this is a toad. Is that a toad? Yeah, yeah, all right. I'm not gonna lie, I got cheat notes right up there on my screen, but I also, <laughs> but had I not had those, I would have guessed toad. Yeah, or exactly. This big is, old frog. This that would have been my second guess. So, toad. Yeah, <laughs> it's, this is a big old toad, um, the right. giant cane toad. Yeah. Um, but, um, so the first thing I would say about this one. Don't get close, right? Is, uh, well, it could just, um, no, they, they, they won't. Yeah, what's we, it, we what it, know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, anything might, can happen, so I'll be over here. <laughs> oh. Starting to move. <laughs> no. um, so these are poisonous. Um, Why did you wait that long yeah. to tell me that, Jack? For crying yeah. out loud, I took a knee. <laughs> You're telling me now. Uh, yeah, highly poisonous, actually. Um, and highly poisonous. <laughs> so if you lick this toad, oh well, you, all right. You'd be in seriously bad trouble. Um, you know, you might you lose. Jack, how'd you figure that out? Um, you, what'd you do? You'd be sick, really, really sick. But there are some people that do it as a sport. I'm not really sure why. Really? Um, yeah, I have no idea why. But the, the, the interesting thing is about... Um, <laughs> you this, this you kind of know why. This <laughs> cane, yeah, well, this cane, toad, this cane looks big, but they can get even bigger than this. 
No way, um, really? How? Yeah, they, like, they, they eat like eat, crazy. Eat like crazy? Yeah, they what do they eat? Everything that can possibly fit in that mouth, which is quite a lot. My God. Um, <laughs> like, um, so um, they actually come from South America. I've seen these in the wild in the Amazon rainforest, which I thought was really weird because I knew about cane toads. Obviously, yeah, yeah, they yeah. live in Australia. Well, they don't live in Australia. They don't belong in Australia. I was going to are these yeah. one of the types of toads that like we, people introduced to control another population? It, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know if you ever saw the Simpsons episode. <laughs> I certainly have. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of them. <laughs> yeah. So with all the cane toads that taking yeah. over so this is the species wow. and they are really really cool but in australia um so they were introduced to control uh, cane beetles that were cane beetles were That's eating the mean. cane um fields yeah and so the ag- you know people introduced them to try and in- stop that happening but what happened was because they're poisonous in south america the animals have evolved to actually um you know to eat them and not die but they won't like eating it but they won't die australian animals haven't evolved that they haven't gone so any animal that eats a cane toad will die almost definitely, including snakes. So the carbon pythons' populations are reducing um, because they see this guy, and normally in the wild they would eat amphibians, eat this, and actually die. Um, and cane toads reproduce crazy, crazy quick, um, like 30,000 tadpoles a year. Oh my God. Wait, yeah. as a total, or like, will this one dude pop out 30,000? Yeah, tadpoles? the girls would. Well, um, right, right, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but he did not like my suggestion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, he didn't. No. <laughs> you were always me. grumpy. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty grumpy. Um, so yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, they reproduce quickly, and they, and they, and they, they spread like a main they, 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 Whoa, <laughs> they go, they're going for the crowd. <laughs> um, what's, what's this came to, what's his name? What's this? Um, this one we name is, no. um, what is the name? Bufo. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, so, so toxin that, that squeeze. you see these things here? That's, yeah, the, that, yeah, yeah. that's the, the, uh, the poison glands. Got it. And in the first episode, we found, you find them all over Australia now in Northern, and they're spreading. Like I said, they're marching. But um, I'd heard that you can actually milk a cane toad. <laughs> um, so just to demonstrate where that, that, that poison's come from, if you squeeze that gland, which I won't do. Because I was going to say, please don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, will, it's, it's, it like squirts out like crazy. That's the first um, episode, and you get the little yeah, glasses yeah. on, yeah, because yeah. you're like, yeah. I could go blind while I do this, <laughs> so now I'm going to go do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the, the cane toad is the reason why a lot of um, animals, um, native animals in Australia are declining. Um, okay. So, yeah. What a jerk. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, not it's his unfortunate fault. because he's really, really cool. But. Yeah, it's cool, but it's not his fault. But no. Humans introduced his species. Mm-hmm. Like, we made the mess, but yeah. still, it's kind of a jerk move. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hang on. We're going to go to the little, I think we have one animal. Or one, one more animal. One, one um, little dude. I there. always, like, I love the next one is, is scary. Uh, just to scary. reiterate, highly poisonous. What would happen if a human? Because you said people lick it for sport, so it doesn't kill humans. If, if they... you ate it, you might die. Got it. Um, uh, but yeah, you'd be. Re- but if re- we licked it, we just get like a little messed up. Oh yeah, yeah. How weird do you want to make this last second? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got, we got one animal left. Let's go ahead and get Bufo out of here before everybody. Oh my goodness! Look at you, just jump right in there. Uh, and this next yep. one, I'm going to leave you for a moment, uh, ever. I'm going to leave you forever. I'll take over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, um, did you ever see arachnophobia? So, um, as I say, I, I, you have arachnophobia. I don't know that I have it. I might just be a wuss. But I, <laughs> but I know that is a big old fuzzy spider. Yeah, and, also uh, venomous. So oh, that, thanks. Yeah. I'm glad you told me that up front. You, 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 you don't want to get bitten by a spider like this. I don't want to get bitten stick. by any spider. So we talked about the cane toad making you yeah. sick. This one would certainly make you sick as well. And uh, you can see the front there. There, the chelicerae, where the fangs are. Yeah, you certainly and can see that, can't you? Look well, at that. But the thing wow. is with tarantulas is that they're, particularly South American tarantulas, this one is a Chilean rose-haired tarantula, and they can be quite calm. They can t- actually flick their hairs at you, so it's quite aggressive. Flick their hairs at you, and, and it would get into your eye. Well, it would, it would sting, guy. and it could even cause you to go blind. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's, it's a really quite calm tarantula. And I've, what I noticed was traveling in South America and seeing these tr- tarantulas, um, not this particular species, but actually the largest tarantula species in the world, the Goliath bird-eating tarantula, yeah. that I was really scared because I always found kind of, it is a, they're kind of a little bit creepy, but seeing them in the wild, and actually they're not aggressive. They don't want to bite you. Yeah. So that leap of faith to put the tarantula, the wild tarantula on my hand, I got over that, and then you start questioning a lot of your fears. So if you're really, really scared of the spider, 
Jack, there's no way in you've hell got I'm putting you got No, a, man. You, you got to put it on your hand. Jack, I got enough problems. I don't need poisonous hairs flying in my I, eyes I, right now. I, I, I've managed to whisper this spider to the point it's very calm. It's almost in a, in a, Jack, like a black Jack, that spider state. knows. <laughs> it's oh, very, very calm. God. So if All you right. put your hand out very, very Jesus calmly Christ. like that. All right, hang on. I'm put, uh, just, let me just walk me through the procedure. I'll put my hand out. Um, I'm not going to look. Close and, 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 um, You going to get them off of me, though? You're not going to let them Fuck. Sorry. Here we go. All right, let's do it up. Oh, he's going into aggressive stance. Jack. <laughs> oh, who put it on the monitor? Oh, man. Wow, well done. Jack, for the love of God, please get it off of me. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm still... <laughs> is he gone yet? He's not coming off, actually. Likes you. Oh, that's Ooh. great. Yeah, I'm sure he loves it. Well done. Oh, jeez, Louise. Oh, that was that was good. Thank I feel you. like... A, <laughs> but, you know, no, to do that, and if you're scared of spiders, I feel like it, it really does feel good, though. There's kind of a... Uh, sure. You, do, you don't feel good? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm feeling a lot of things. I'm all the feelings right now. That wasn't that bad, only because it was so short and he didn't flick his poisonous red hairs into my eyeballs. Yeah. I would say, because that didn't happen, I feel very good about the experience. <laughs> What's good. his name? Um, oh, jeez, don't uh, drop him. <laughs> no, Got a name on this one? Either. No. This one we didn't name? No. I need this one to have a name. For the uh, love of what, God, what, someone give it a name. Anybody? Matt? Matt. Billy. Billy. Uh, Billy. Billy Matt. Two first names. I like it. Okay. <laughs> well, Billy Matt, uh, say thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Billy Matt. Uh, <laughs> we got a couple of questions in the room before we get out of here. How many I got, Kate? I got two. Let's do two questions. You want to hold on to Billy Matt? You're going to give him away. Oh, I, I'll hold. I'll hold. Why not? It's whatever you, it's <laughs> it makes whatever it you do, man. You're right. It surely <laughs> does. Make it a good question. You're going to hold Billy Matt. First question right here up in the front. Go for it. It's me. Um, hi. I'm so curious what it's like after a day of working with animals all day. Do you go home and is your house just filled with animals? No, it's not. Actually, complete opposite. I mean, I spend most of my time in the wild looking for animals. Um, so I, I don't want to have the time to look after animals. I also... I, I, I love wild animals, and I, I, I prefer them to be in the wild. So, you know, these animals, they, they're not like a dog. Uh, they, they, they belong and they behave properly out in the wild, and so that's where I prefer to see them. And so there's nothing better than finding an animal that's living in its natural habitat. Um, that's what I, that gets me going. So, yeah, I don't actually have any pets. Um, but really? I, I used to have a pet snake, as I, as I mentioned, um, but that was the only animal that I had. That was only because I wanted to learn more about snakes. Now, I don't have any pets. Fascinating. Not even a dog or anything growing up? No, I, well, no not a dog growing up either, no. no. I, I, was, I, was, I lived in the countryside, yeah. so there was lots of um, you know, neighbors like cats and stuff like that, but no, I, didn't, um, I was always interested in the, the animals that I could find in Africa right. or, or Brazil. And yeah. so that's what I was mentioning you know, with the anacondas. That was the stuff that really excited me. Not necessarily, not so much badgers or you know, the hedgehogs, but they, they, they were interesting, but I kind of wanted to find the more crazy animals. I will say, as much as I'm terrified of uh, Billy Matt over here, he is gorgeous. Like really? the, the spots on his back and the fur and all that stuff when, the, when they're not flying into my eyes and making me blind and poisoning me, absolutely beautiful. And I know that's a ridiculous sentence, but if you could see it up close, guys, I'm telling you, this thing is amazing looking. Yeah, so cool. Truly. This and is as close as I think I need to get, but like, so cool. <laughs> But, but before, you were like you know, miles away, and now yeah. you're starting um, to... You're right. It does kind of work a little bit. The more you understand about the animals, the more you appreciate them, love them, and that's what I'm trying to do. What are the odds? What are the odds he jumps? They, no, very unlikely. Um, I don't even think they... Not can. impossible, though, huh? Uh, <laughs> 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 Kate, I got at least one more. I got one more question. Let's do it up real quick. Come on down. Hi, Jack. Um, Hi. My question comes from our website, buildseries.com. You have such an adoration for animals, but if you weren't working with animals, what would you be doing instead? Um, that's a really good question. Um, so, so one thing that I do love and it's the, with the animals is actually adventures. Um, I love traveling. Um, so it'd be pretty much related. I love just being out in, in the world. And so even if it isn't any wildlife, I like to be traveling. So um, what, as I travel, I quite like interesting modes of transport. I don't like things to be easy. And so one thing that I made sure in all my trips that I have a car that's always going to break down, a Land Rover <laughs> Defender, and um, it's in all of the episodes. <laughs> and so I don't know whether I'd be a mechanic or not, or just like somebody who writes travels in the car. I'd be like the Van Fest version of a uh, van, what's it called? Van, um, what's it called? The way you, you, we live in a van, van life. I'd sure. be like van life. <laughs> I'd be van life in a Defender. I don't yeah. know, maybe vlogging about it or something. Um, yeah. There's a, very, there's a very authentic element to your show that I thoroughly enjoyed where 
you, like maybe your expert's like telling you something or you're literally driving to wherever your destination is and you, you, you put the brake, you stop uh, the entire show because something in that moment has just yeah. uh, naturally, organically caught your eye. Like Absolutely. you pull the car over, uh, I got to pull the snake out everybody of the street. That, uh, so the blue tongued, yeah. uh, whatever, like it, just dived in. Like, yeah, I mean, everybody that goes traveling with me gets that. If they haven't experienced it, they get the fright of their life because they don't really quite realize. And people warn them. Like, yeah. I, I always am driving and there's always animals crossing yeah. the road. It's the greatest time to find animals. And um, I put the brakes on, like slam it on to the point where, you know, you think you're going to like crash the car. Right, right. Like, so, brake, stay. <laughs> yeah. Jump out the car. I'm out there really quickly. How many of those freebies does your producer give you before they're like, dude, we got to film a show. Can you stop pulling over for every uh, single no, no, buck? No, they, they did. And I, I yeah. was like, I always said, we got more chance of finding animals whilst we're traveling between location. Let's oh make sure God. we have all the cameras, put all just the sound gear on. It. And then eventually we're like, Jack, for, no, look, please, no, just, can we just get there? We're going <laughs> to find a like, snake, man. Let's I, just do it. To, yeah. to find animals as well whilst you're driving, you need to be going slower. And so the camera guy is like, like, come on, go 100K. I was like, I'm going to stay back. I'm going 40K yeah. the whole way. And I had to go there. Amazing. Uh, well, man, uh, one, I... I really do want uh, Billy Matt to, to be away from me now. Because uh, <laughs> you're gesticulating with that hand. And I feel like at any moment, he's going to jump over here. Out of love, I'm sure. Uh, but two... Uh, I gotta wrap it up, man. We got we gotta well, let you go. I've had so much fun with you, dude, and I am a little less afraid than I was uh, That's before fantastic. we started. That's so great. Thank you. Um, your show, uh, I wrote it down right here in the card. Let's take a look. I know it's on Nat Geo, uh, right? Ten Nine Central Sundays. Nat Geo Wild. Nat Geo Wild. Uh, Ten Nine Central, and it's on Hulu as well. If you guys haven't seen the first couple episodes, you can catch up on Hulu as well, and it's on the website. There's a million ways to watch it. You gotta watch it. Uh, your enthusiasm is genuine. It's infectious. It's amazing. You're so much fun to watch. You're brave. And you're really cool and I'm really excited that you came and hung out with us so thank well, you so much I appreciate it I love yeah, showing man. animals to everybody so thanks so much you're really for, good for at what you here. do of course man you're welcome anytime uh, even even Billy Matt over there okay Billy uh, remember guys no none of this uh, just I guess snaps oh. round of applause move your hands but please in some way shape or form show your appreciation for the great Jack Randall uh, and all of you guys that helped us out the, the handlers and everybody thank you so much as well uh, snaps pull it out this is it we're done check out the show out there with Jack Randall everybody thank you so much man Absolute Thank pleasure. You. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>